All right guys, so here is another word problem and they're asking us to create an equation from this word problem. So similar to the last problem, except this one is a little bit more involved. Okay, so this is a fairly lengthy problem. Okay, so just stick with it and we'll go through it together. <clears throat> it says Bill determines that if 26 orange trees are planted per acre, each mature tree yields about 590 oranges per year. Okay, for each additional tree planted per acre, the number of oranges produced annually by each tree decreases by 14. Okay, so for each additional tree planted, the number of oranges produced annu annually by each tree decreases by 14. All right, and it says create a table and find an equation to model the problem. <clears throat> All right, so I already created a blank table for us. All right. From this table, we're going to have to create an equation just like our last problem, okay? But again, this problem is going to be a little more in-depth, so just stick with it, and again, we'll go through it together. All right, so let's start filling in this table. We have trees, oranges per trees, and total oranges. So we know that if he plants 26 orange trees, right, so 26, okay, well, that's going to be 590 oranges per tree, right? And then total oranges, you're just going to simply multiply the two, right? You have 26 times 590, and you'll get 15,340. So 15,340. Okay, and what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and just fill out this whole table, all right? So we're going to continue to fill this out. So if you're at 27 trees, right? We know that the oranges per tree will naturally go down by 14. So instead of having 590, right, you're going to have 576. So you'll have 576. And now we want to know the total oranges. We're just going to multiply these two numbers together, right? <clears throat> the amount of trees we have times, all right, the amount of oranges per tree. So we do 27 times 576, and we get 15,552. So 15,552. And now what I'm gonna do for the sake of this video to keep it fairly short, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. Okay, just continuing what I'm doing here. Okay guys, so I went ahead and just finished filling in that table. All right, and now that we have this table filled in, we have to create an equation, all right? Well. This particular problem isn't as obvious, all right, in what we're dealing with. So we don't know if we're dealing with something linear. Is this going to be a quadratic? Is this going to be a cubic, right? It's not very obvious, unlike the last problem where it was very obvious that we were dealing with a linear relationship, okay? This one is not um, as obvious. So in order to determine what type of relationship we're dealing with, okay, we have to do something called the finite differences, okay? So we have to do something called finite differences, and I'm just going to write that here, so finite um, difference. Right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to compare our y values. Now, look at our table, okay? So we have three things here. We have our trees, our oranges per tree, and our total oranges. If you were to look at this on a graph, we're looking at an x, y, okay? So, okay, our x here is going to be our trees, and our y is going to be total oranges. So again, on our x, we'll have our trees. On our y, okay, we'll have our total oranges, okay? Makes sense? When you do the finite difference, okay, what you're trying to do here is compare the y value. You want to look at the change in the y value. What you want to do is you want to try to find, okay, where the change in the y value is the same across all of them, okay? And that will tell you what relationship you're dealing with. So this will make more sense when we go through it. All right, so finite difference. We're going to do first difference first. So for example, we're going to write first difference. Okay, and so let me show you how we're going to set this up. Okay, so here's my first y value, here's my second. I'm going to subtract the two. 
All right. So I'm going to do 15,552 minus 15,340. And I'm going to see the change in the two of them. So let's go ahead and do that. So like 15,552 minus 15,340, and I get 212. Okay, I'm now going to do this for the next y value. So going down, I want to see the change between these two values. So I'm going to do 15,736 minus 15,552. So again, let's do that. 15,736 minus 15,552. And I'm going to get 184. Okay, and I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of these values. Okay guys, so I just went ahead and completed it for the rest of our y value. So here is our first difference. Notice that the change here between our y values is different, right? Right here we have 212, 184, 156, 128. Okay, so we know that, okay, the first difference didn't work out, meaning it's not going to be linear. Okay, so first difference will be linear. Second difference will be for a quadratic, right? Third difference will be for a cubic and so on, all right? So since this didn't work out, right, we need these numbers to be the same, we're now going to move on to the second difference. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write that here, second. Difference. And we're not going to use these y values again. We're going to use the values that we obtained from the first difference, and we're going to compare the change. We're going to do it the same way, though. So we're going to change, um, see the change from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Okay, so how I'm going to do that? I'm simply just going to do 184 minus 212. So 184, <clears throat> 184 minus 212, and I get negative 28. So I get negative 28. I'm then going to do it here, 156 minus 184. So again, the change between the two, negative 28. Okay, change between these two, 128 minus 156, negative 28. Well, look what happened here. All of our numbers are the same, right? Meaning the second difference worked out, right? We got negative 28, negative 28, negative 28. They're the same. So if the second difference worked out, we know that this is going to be a quadratic. That is the relationship we're dealing with here. So this is not linear, but this is going to be a quadratic. Okay, so that's important, okay, to know. So we're dealing with a quadratic here. Now we need to find an equation. So now that we know that we're dealing with a quadratic, we can find an equation, all right? And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to actually use our calculator for this. So I'm going to zoom in on my calculator so you can see um, what's going on here. All right, guys, so here is my calculator. And I'm going to show you how we can get the equation, okay, for this particular problem, now knowing that we're dealing with a quadratic. All right, so what you're going to want to do here is you want to hit the stat button. So you're going to look for stat, which is right here. So hit stat. And then you're going to go to edit and hit enter. Now, for this video, I already went ahead and filled in this table, so you can see here that we have an L1 and L2 value. That L1 is acting like your X, and that L2 is acting like your Y, okay? So again, X is going to be the amount of trees, so we have 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And again, you could have kept going further in your table if you wish, all right? Depends how many values you want to get. And then our L2 is acting like our Y, which is the total amount of oranges, all right? And we went ahead and plugged those values in. Okay, so now that we have this plugged in, so again, you'd have to do this. I already did it just to keep this video fairly short, okay? We're going to hit second quit. So hit second quit, all right? And then we're going to go to stat again. So we want to go to stat, all right? We're going to go to calc. And then we're going to look for something called quadratic regression. What this is going to do is it's going to take those values that you just plugged into that table and it's going to generate an equation, okay, based on those values. Now we know it's going to be a quadratic regression because we already determined that by doing the finite difference, right? So that's why that's important. So we know what to use here, right? I'm not going to use cubic regression because we already determined it's a quadratic, right? So that's why we have to do that finite difference so we know which one to use here. So it's going to be quadratic, so I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm just going to hit enter again. And there is our equation, right? It tells us y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So again, it's a quadratic in standard form. They tell us what to plug into a. They tell us what to plug into b, right? c is 0. And then we just have that r squared value, which is equal to 1. 
Um, we don't need that right now, okay, so don't worry about that. But we're just looking at that A, B, and C value. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this equation out, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this problem, and that will be it. Okay, guys, so here is our equation written out. You may be asking, well, what can we do with that now? Well, remember what we're deal dealing with here. We're dealing with the quadratic, and look at our equation, our A value, right? So remember, AX squared plus BX plus C. Our A value is negative, right? And when it's negative and we're dealing with quadratic, we know that we're going to have a parabola, right, that opens down. So we'll have something like this, right? Opening down, and our vertex being right here. So what this tells us is we're going to have kind of a max point, meaning... There's only so many trees you can plant before you're going to start declining on your return. Okay, so if you are a farmer and you want to determine how many trees do I need to plant in order to get a max um, harvest, right? So you want to max out on the total number of oranges, right? Because remember, we're on X and Y here. So if you continue to plant trees, eventually you're going to start declining, right? So you don't want to do that. So you want to find that sweet spot or that max point in other words, you want to find the vertex, right? So we want to determine how many trees we need to plant in order to get the max harvest of oranges. And how we're going to do that is we're simply going to find the vertex. Now we can use the equation to do this, where we have x equals negative b all over 2a, right? That's how we get the x value of the vertex, and that's what we're trying to find, right? Remember, x why? We're trying to find how many trees we need to plant in order for a max return. So we're trying to find the x value of the vertex. So all we have to do is use this equation. All right, we can do that. And we're going to get these values from the equation we got already that our calculator generated for us. So let's just go ahead and fill this in and we'll determine how many trees we need for a max harvest. So we'll do x equals, remember this is my b, so I'll have negative 9 54 all over 2 times negative 14, right, my A. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this in our calculator, and then we'll be done here. <clears throat> so we're going to do negative, so we have <clears throat> negative 954 divided by, so 2 times negative 14 is negative 28. And we get 34, about 34. So we can say here, X has to be about 34. So if you want a max harvest, right, the amount of trees you should plant is 34. You shouldn't plant more than that because what's going to happen, you're going to start decline in the amount of oranges that you produce, right? So 34 would be like that sweet spot you want to be at, right? So 34 orange trees would be kind of where you want to go, right? You don't want to go um, past that though because then again, you'd be declining in your harvest. All right, and that is how you go about doing a problem such as this one.